Today we're figuring out whether an AMD Ryzen 5000 APU or an Intel Comet Lake CPU is better for gaming in a laptop form factor using an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070 laptop GPU. We've got 1080p data, 1440p data, all sorts of games, so let's get benchmarking. Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Today we have a laptop performance comparison that is set to be very interesting for people considering a new NVIDIA GeForce RTX 30 series gaming laptop. In this generation, we finally have high-end GPU options available with both AMD and Intel CPUs. So this presents a perfect opportunity to compare these products in gaming and see which platform is ultimately the better choice. We've already done this over the last few weeks in productivity tests, so now it's time to figure out which product is better for gaming. If we go back to last year when I made a similar comparison between Intel's Core i7-10750H and AMD's Ryzen 7 4800H in gaming using the exact same laptop chassis, the results were clear. Intel's Comet Lake design was superior for gaming, particularly when both this CPU and GPU were configured to use the same amount of power. The 10750H was 7% faster on average for 1080p gaming, with results in the most CPU limited conditions exceeding 10%. However, with AMD offering the more efficient design, when raising power limits across each component to match total system power consumption, the margin did shrink to just a couple of percent. However, back then we were just using an RTX 2060 GPU, which is only mid-tier and was the fastest available in AMD designs at the time. Today we're getting a look with the RTX 3070 instead, which presents a significant performance leap in the range of 50%. We also get to pit the latest from each company against each other, with Ryzen 5000 taking on Intel's 10th gen, representing this first wave of laptop refreshers. Later in the year, we do expect Tiger Lake 8 core designs to become available, and we'll look to update this sort of testing at that point, but for now, it's AMD Zen 3 versus Intel Comet Lake. Unfortunately, today we don't have the exact same laptop with two different CPUs inside, but we do have two great test platforms to work with. Both have adequate cooling for the components inside, which is a big positive and both use the same GPU configuration, NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 3070 laptop GPU with a power limit of 115 to 130 watts with dynamic boost. There's also dual channel DDR4 memory inside at JetX speeds for both brands, so that's 2933 on Intel and 3200 on AMD, plus 1080p 240Hz displays. We've also tested both systems with a 1440p external display connected directly to the discrete GPU, bypassing any Optimus performance loss. Representing Team AMD today is the XMG Apex 17, an upcoming high-performance laptop featuring AMD's Ryzen 9 5900HX processor. We've tested this laptop previously in our productivity workloads, and it works well with a default 45 watt power limit on the CPU and some room for boosting above that. Unfortunately, due to supply shortages, XMG hasn't launched this system yet, so we have one of the few units in the wild today. Representing Team Intel is the Gigabyte Aorus 15P. Same GPU inside as we talked about, however this system is packing an Intel Core i7-10870H processor, again in its default mode that runs up to 45 watts long term, although there are some additional power modes that can push it further. Our focus today is on like-for-like -like testing, so in both cases we're running at 45 watts on the CPU, and with thermals well below limits on each respective platform, so there's no thermal throttling occurring. The Aorus 15P is available today, and that's something we'll be talking about later. So in essence, this is a battle of the Ryzen 9 5900HX versus the Core i7-10870H in very similar systems, at least as similar as we could achieve with the laptops available today. Both 8-core CPUs and should be common parts used in laptop refreshers in the first half of 2021. Now you might be wondering why we are putting the 5900HX up against the 10870H. Well firstly it comes down to the systems available, but it goes beyond that. From what we understand speaking to OEMs, these two products should be similarly priced in the market. The Ryzen 7 5800H is more going to compete with the Core i7-10750H in terms of pricing, while at the top end it will be a battle of the flagship parts, Core i9-10980HK versus Ryzen 9 5980HX. 
When you look at the lineups, the 5900HX ends up lining up against the 10870H both in pricing and product stack. And for the most part, the 5900HX is very similar to the 5800H anyway. Our productivity testing found around a 4% improvement on averages. There's only a very small clock speed difference with the same core count. Usual laptop test notes apply here, and all the laptops we use for testing can be found in the description below. There's a lot of them, so let's get into the game benchmarks. First up, we have Resident Evil 2, which when testing at 1080p on a laptop form factor, is reasonably CPU limited. It's here we see our first substantial win to the Ryzen 9 5900HX, with it delivering 15% higher frame rates with the same GPU. The bottleneck is substantial enough on the 10870H laptop that, regardless of the GPU, we're ending up with about 150 FPS, whether that's RTX 3060 or 3070. The 5900HX is giving us an additional 20 FPS or so here, which is a solid result and a reversal of what we saw with AMD's prior generation parts, where Intel was faster. In Borderlands 3, the Ryzen 9 5900HX delivers 9% faster average frame rates and 17% higher 1% low frame rates compared to the Core i7 10870H. This is also a relatively CPU limited test at 1080p, heavily utilizing a couple of threads at times during the benchmark pass. The Intel platform's lower 1% lows deliver slightly more inconsistent performance throughout the run. However, not all games are going to be CPU limited on a laptop with an RTX 3070, even at 1080p. One example of this is Control, where performance is within 2% on either AMD or Intel CPUs. The game is GPU bound, and on our test systems, both were using roughly the same power with dynamic boost. The CPU dropped down to between 35 and 40 watts, allowing the GPU to hit 120 to 125 watts for an additional amount of performance. GPU clock speeds were similar as well, so everything was performing as expected. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is a CPU-bound game at 1080p on laptops with this level of discrete graphics. In our previous comparison, Intel's 10750H had around a 6% lead on AMD's Ryzen 7 4800H in the same laptop design. That has flipped for this generation in a like-for-like -like comparison. Now the 5900HX is leading the 10870H by 7%, going on average frame rates. While we can't directly compare 4800H to 5900HX frame rates here, I think it's safe to say the new Zen 3 design is providing a decent boost here. Cyberpunk 2077 is GPU limited on today's laptops at 1080p. While the AMD system was slightly faster in terms of minimum performance, in general, the 5900HX and 10870H deliver the same experience in this title. Interestingly, with Dynamic Boost, I saw that the Intel system from Gigabyte was pushing GPU power and clock speeds a little higher than the AMD system here for a comparative reduction in CPU power, although this behavior does seem to vary in GPU limited titles. Sometimes like Control, everything is the same, sometimes the AMD system has more GPU power, and at other times the Intel system has more GPU power. There's no clear, consistent behavior as it does vary from game to game, as you'd expect for a dynamic power allocation system. Ultimately though, performance is similar. Watch Dogs Legion is another title where performance is relatively close between the AMD and Intel laptops. The 5900HX was a little faster for average performance, and the Intel system a little faster for 1% low performance. It's a pretty even experience in this title, not one to get excited over. Horizon Zero Dawn delivers very similar performance to what we've just been talking about in GPU limited games. The difference between the 5900HX and 10870H is negligible. Same in Death Stranding, which had the closest margins between the processor options of all the games I tested so far. GPU limitations with the same platform will do that. Hitman 3's Dartmoor benchmark is very demanding on the CPU, making it a good test for the game's physics and simulation systems. The Ryzen 9 5900HX has a clear advantage in this CPU limited benchmark, providing 13% higher average frame rates and 16% higher 1% lows compared to the Core i7-10870H, which is similar to what we saw from Resident Evil 2 at the start of this benchmark breakdown. Rainbow Six Siege is one of the few titles I tested that's both CPU limited and shows a clear advantage for Intel. The 5900HX is 6% behind the 10870H here in the Vulkan version of the game using medium settings at 1080p. This is an outlier, however it's important to note that AMD CPU is not always the better choice. The last three benchmarks I have for you are really CPU limited situations like Rainbow Six Siege, playing games at 1080p with medium to low settings. First up is Grand Theft Auto V, which shows the 5900HX delivering 17% higher average frame rates than the 10870H in this game. 
The simple reason for this is that the 5900HX is able to clock itself 16% higher within the same 45 watt power limit. The 10870H sits around 3.75 GHz all core for the duration of our benchmark run, compared to 4.35 GHz on the 5900HX. Of course, not all threads are fully loaded, only a few are being utilized to the maximum here, but GTA is frequency sensitive, and this is borne out in the results. Civilization VI was one of the outlier titles previously where AMD's 4800H was faster than the 10750H in our like-for-like -like testing. It's no longer an outlier in this suite of benchmarks with the 5900HX and 10870H, however AMD does still hold a performance advantage here that's similar to previous benchmarks. 14% on average, with a 20% lead in 1% lows. The final game I wanted to examine in depth today is CSGO running at 1080p using low settings. In this competitive title, the Ryzen 9 5900HX is clearly far superior to the 10870H, offering 33% higher average frame rates in what is essentially an entirely CPU limited game with a GPU like the RTX 3070. While you don't always see margins like this comparing Ryzen 5000 and Intel 10th gen, occasionally you may see an outlier like this where AMD's APU is able to flex its muscles. Okay, time to view a performance summary showing all 23 benchmarks I ran on both the Ryzen 9 5900HX and Core i7 10870H systems. There's really two things going on here. Many of today's games with an RTX 3070 are going to be GPU limited on a laptop when running at 1080p ultra settings. 12 of the benchmarks here had a margin of less than 5% between AMD and Intel, and the majority of these are GPU limited. Frame rates in all instances are very playable on a powerful laptop such as the Gigabyte Aorus 15P and XMG Apex 17 that I tested with, so in a substantial amount of situations it doesn't really matter much which CPU you end up with. However, when your laptop becomes partially or fully CPU limited, with current generation parts, AMD's Ryzen 9 5900HX does deliver better performance than the i7-10870H. In the most CPU limited situations like competitive games at 1080p low settings, the margins are in the 15-20% to range in favour of AMD for the most part. In several other titles, margins of high single digits were common, the 10870H was faster to a notable degree in both Rainbow Six Siege and Cyberpunk 2077 ray tracing, so AMD isn't faster in all situations, but it is faster most of the time. On average, the Ryzen 9 5900HX ends up 6% faster than the Cry 7 10870H, which is a clean reversal of the situation with AMD's prior generation. The 10750H back then was 7% faster than the 4800H, now we have the 5900HX 6% ahead of the 10870H. Do the margins change significantly at 1440p? Well one thing to factor in here is that our AMD laptop does support resizable bar, whereas our Intel laptop does not. Nvidia uses a whitelist of games for rebar, so not every game is affected here. However, some titles such as Metro Exodus and Watch Dogs Legion do benefit with up to 10% more performance. Given this isn't a fair battle, I don't think those results are worth considering, given some Intel laptops do support rebar. So in focusing on non-rebar games at 1440p, AMD's Ryzen 9 5900HX is on average 3% faster in the games tested, largely assisted by some titles that are still CPU limited to some degree, like Hitman 3 and Resident Evil 2. But even factoring in rebar, 14 of the 19 benchmark results showed the AMD part within 5% of the 10870H, which is largely negligible. If you are gaming at a higher resolution like this, and plan on playing mostly on ultra settings, your choice of laptop CPU for gaming doesn't matter a great deal. In both instances, so 1080p and 1440p, I did notice somewhat higher margins on average for 1% low performance compared to average FPS performance that we were just showing. For example, while the 5900HX is 6% faster in average FPS on average, it's 9% faster in 1% low performance on average at 1080p, so this is another factor to consider for gaming. In terms of wall power draw, as I know this is something that a lot of people will be asking and requesting, just going to look at this briefly in GPU limited situations, where the AMD system uses about 10 to 15 watts less power to deliver the same performance in these GPU limited environments while gaming at 1440p. So nothing too unusual to see here, both systems are working as expected and as we've seen in previous generations the AMD platform is slightly more efficient overall. Overall, I found this investigation comparing the Ryzen 9 5900HX to the Core i7-10870H in games to be pretty insightful. 
I wasn't quite sure what to expect based on what I'd seen from Ryzen 4000 processors, which underwhelmed me with worse gaming performance than I expected given how powerful those Zen 2 processors were in productivity. With this newer generation of Ryzen 5000 processors, in today's market AMD has been able to convert a gaming loss last year to a gaming win this year, which does help in newer laptop designs with faster discrete graphics. With performance 10-20% faster than the 10870H in the most CPU limited games, the Ryzen 9 5900HX is clearly benefiting from its redesigned CPU core. The switch from two CCXs to a single CCX with unified cache, the doubling of the L3 from 8 to 16 megabytes, and the overall IPC gains made with the Zen 3 design not only assist to produce better productivity performance, but better gaming performance as well. This shouldn't be a surprise for those that have been following Zen 3 vs Comet Lake on their desktop, where AMD and Intel now provide essentially identical performance. However, unlike on Power Unlimited desktop platforms, AMD does also benefit from a more efficient 7 nanometer design in laptops, giving their processor higher clocks while gaming within the same power envelope as Intel's processors. This superior efficiency allows the 5900HX to not just match the 10870H, but beat it, and quite convincingly in some, but not all games we tested. If you are going to be playing more CPU intensive titles on your gaming laptop, say competitive shooters at low settings at 1080p, then it's clear today that you should buy an AMD laptop for the best performance in general. Depending on the games in question, you may not even need a discrete GPU as powerful or expensive as an RTX 3070. But ultimately, this recommendation only holds when significantly CPU limited. There are still plenty of games today that are not CPU bound at 1080p ultra settings with laptop hardware, and newer designs are also shifting to 1440p displays, which further reduces CPU bottlenecks. In those situations, and indeed on average across all the games we tested, performance is pretty similar between the 5900HX and 10870H. Yes, the 5900HX is slightly faster on average, but being just a few percent ahead isn't substantial enough to make a strong recommendation for the AMD design. In that situation, we have to look at what else AMD and Intel are offering. On the AMD side, their biggest selling point right now is far superior productivity performance. If you plan on using your laptop for anything other than gaming, the 5900HX is much faster than the 10870H, up to 50% faster in multi-threaded workloads and 25% faster in single thread. The fact that gaming performance is now also better than Intel at times, or in most instances basically equal, is a bonus to this package, and not something we could have said about AMD's prior generation parts where there was more of a trade-off between productivity and gaming. In normal times, where there are plenty of laptop designs to choose from and ample supply, this performance combination would be a killer blow for Intel. Right now, there is no two ways about it. The Core i7-10870H is the inferior processor, but we don't live in normal times, which has given Intel an opening back into the market. As it stands right now, it is far easier to get a laptop with a 10870H inside, or other Intel processors for that matter, than it is to find anything with Ryzen 5000 inside. Major brands like Gigabyte, MSI, and Razer in particular have all prioritized Intel over AMD for their refreshed, higher-end gaming laptops, and all have options available right now with new GeForce RTX 30 series GPUs. Now granted, some of these laptops are in stock and others aren't, but at least there is some supply to go around. If you go on your favourite retailer and search for Ryzen 7 5800H or Ryzen 9 5900HX laptops, you'll end up with far fewer options, none of which are in stock. That's because all of AMD's products are under a serious 7 nanometer supply crunch with sky-high demand, and that doesn't look to be changing anytime soon. We've had XMG's Apex 17 for a while now, but they can't even give us a firm date on when it will be available. The latest update on their Reddit thread had no forecasted on-sale date for this design due to supply constraints, while their very first Ryzen 5000 laptops wouldn't go on sale until the middle or end of April, at least a month away. Meanwhile, they're already selling Intel 10870H models right now. So it's all well and good for AMD to have the better performing product in both productivity and gaming, but it matters for little when you can't buy it and have fewer designs to choose from. For gamers in particular, given the 10870H gets pretty close to the 5900HX in most instances, especially when GPU limited as you'd expect, and you can actually buy one of these laptops today, it is the obvious choice for now. But if AMD gets their stock situation sorted, then Intel will likely be in a bit of strife until their next generation parts become available. 
Anyway, that's it for this look, comparing AMD to Intel performance in games with the latest gaming laptop hardware. Hopefully we'll, we'll be able to revisit this when we start getting new Intel designs in. Potentially we'll look at it again when, for example, we get a 5980HX in and we can compare that to a 10980HK. Not quite sure what's happening in the future with those sorts of things, but rest assured we will be testing as many of these comparisons as we can as time goes on. Anyway, if you're interested in supporting the channel, you can do so via our Patreon and Floatplane accounts. Both of those you'll find links to in the description below. You'll gain access to things like our Discord chat, monthly live streams, behind the scenes videos, all that good stuff. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.